Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Full work limited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. With the Lucky Land slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandsLots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. With Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Bill Wallace, it is an honour and a pleasure for you to be at the UK Martial Arts Show in Doncaster 2023. Thank you so much for coming. My pleasure, thank you. Um, how many times can you remember you've been coming to this show now? Since its inception. Uh, was that eight, nine years, something like that? I've been, you know, I, I've lost count of times I've come over, but, but I have a blast every time I come over. I meet new friends, keep the old ones sometimes. Sometimes you just get rid of them. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, now we're having a blast. I'm having a ball. Yeah. Over your years, you've seen many martial arts come and go, and sadly, um, some of them are not with us now. But you have your wonderful memories of some of the greats. I do. So, um, as a passion of mine with martial arts, I'd like you to talk about yourself and some of them when you've worked together with them and your fights with them. Well... So, basically, the first one I'd like you to talk about is Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis and I, you know, we met in 1968 at the United States Grand Nationals in, in uh, Kansas City, Missouri. And I was just sparring with some guys, and he was sparring with somebody. And I didn't pay any attention because I knew who he was, but, you know, I'm worried about my face. And somebody, you know, so he walks up and he says, where'd you learn to fight like that? And I says, I, I studied in Okinawa. Where? And I said, Naha, Kadena. I was at Kadena Air Base. I was in the service, and I practiced in Naha, Azure Shimabuku School. He says, that's where I studied. I said, really? He said, and, and from that moment on, we became friends. Traveled all over the world together, fought each other several times, sparred, fight, competed against each other, and traveled all over. And probably the, the toughest one guy that I've ever sparred. Now, I'm a competitor. I'll win. But oftentimes when you win, you really don't, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yeah. And uh, I, was a, I, was a, I was a super competitor because I just wanted to win, at, at, not at any cost, but, but I was good. I, my distancing was good, my timing was good. And Joe was just one tough son of a gun. And yeah. I, we, we loved him, I, my, I just hate the time when he died. Yeah. The next one, of course, you did a movie with, but you were actually in the ring with him in kickboxing, and that was Chuck Norris. Can you tell us a little bit about Chuck, who's still around? Well, yeah, Chuck, Chuck and I did a film in 1978. Uh, we'd been friends before, uh, because I, I, I studied also in California in San Bernardino, and went to a couple tournaments he was at, and some, some uh, places where we trained together. And he stopped by the school when I was working for some guy in Memphis, Tennessee, and he come by and he says, what are you doing? in October, and I says, I have no plans. He says, well, I'm, I'm going to do a movie, and he would like me to be the bad guy. And I said, I can do that. I can be a bad guy. So we talked and talked and talked. He said, could we spar? And I said, sure. Now, at that time, 1978, I was at the top of my game. And I, I said, we'll just spar. So we kicked everybody out of the school. It was just he and I. And we sparred for an hour and a half, two hours. And we had an absolute ball. Nobody will ever know what happened. 
Nobody needs to know. It was between uh, Chuck and I. We had a blast. I had an absolute, I'm not going to say anything. He's not going to say anything. We just had a blast. And then we decided we, that I was going to be the bad guy in the film. And I went out to L.A. We did the film October, November, December. Yeah. And it uh, premiered October, in uh, January. The guy who was behind that movie was Pat Johnson. And you had fought Pat in a couple of times. Yeah. Can you yeah. tell us a bit about Pat? Because he's not so well now, is he? He's got a little dementia. Yeah. You know, uh, wonderful guy, nicest guy in the world. Uh, great teacher, great choreographer. Yeah. Uh, when we did the fight scenes, you know, I, I, again, I'm, the first time I'd ever done anything, I didn't know anything about it at all. But I knew the things that I could do good, you know, like with the kicking aspect of it. And Pat said, well, we want you to do this, and we do this, and you do this. And I said, well, Pat, I've defended my title 20 times. I haven't lost yet. And I said, this is what I would do. I wouldn't do it the way you want me to do it. And if you want this thing to be realistic, which I hope you do, yeah. I would do it this way. And Chuck, you know how I'm gonna do it, so you'll be able to react to it so it looks like it's a good fight scene, not a choreographed fight scene. And matter of fact, a lot of people say it's one of the best fight scenes I've ever seen, because we sparred. We actually threw the stuff at each other, to hit each other. Yeah, fantastic. Um, Let's just touch on, of course, your other famous fight, which is the one with Jackie Chan that he actually took you to Hong Kong for. He and killed me. <laughs> he cheated. He used cups. It? He used a chainsaw. He used a, a metal bender. I'm, I'm using my, he cheated. <laughs> what was he like working with Jackie? A nice guy. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful person. I went over there. We were getting ready to choreograph the fight scenes. And he says, Bill, I want to do this and this. And when I do this, and you do this. And I'll do that. And I said, can I say something, Jackie? I don't want to, you know, I'm, I'm staging him or anything, but, you know, because he's been doing this a long time. And I said, you brought me over here. Who am I in the script? I'm the retired world champion. You're a New York City policeman. That's it. And if we have a nip and tuck fight all the way through it, people are going to say, well, so much for being a, a, a karate world champion. You have trouble fighting a New York City policeman even though it might be Jackie Chan. Yeah. So I said, what I should do is beat the crap out of you for the, four, for the first three-fourths of the fight scene. When I get you know, cocky and all this stuff, I do something stupid, and you take advantage of it. And that's what we did, and it was great. I just want to know where at the end of the fight scene where the chainsaw came from. <laughs> One obscure film that people might forget is you were in a film called Death Dimension. Uh, do you remember much about that? What's the name of it? Death Dimension. We have it labelled as Death Dimension over here, but I don't know if you remember. Who, who's in it? Oh, gosh. Um, Harold Staccato was in it and a few others. I think you only had a small scene in it. Jim Kelly? Jim Kelly was in it. Oh, probably, probably uh, L.A. Street Fighters. Might be, yes. LA, probably L.A. Street Fighters. You had a small scene in it, yeah. Ah, they're great. I was out there, they were out there, and sheep went like that, you know, because they don't have to pay for any airfare or flight. So we just, just had fun. And uh, there's a lot of films that are put together like that out there in Los Angeles. Yeah. They were sitting in a can up on the, pretty soon somebody will say, hey, let's take some of this one, some of this one, some of this one, and make a full inch feature. Oh, well, and it'd be well, great. I think that was exactly what that was. Yeah. Um, kickboxing. What do you feel the legacy of kickboxing is? Because you've seen it come from nowhere and, and martial arts just being the martial arts sort of points fighting well, and then right through to kickboxing. Can you back, tell us what back, you back in the 60s yeah. and early 70s, it was point fighting. The techniques may be good, maybe bad. We didn't know because we had to control the technique. So back then, some of the visionaries wanted to find out if some of these techniques really worked in kickboxing. So the first three or four matches, we wore the safety equipment. So we found out that that back fist might work, that the ridge hand would work, and the, and the punches would work, maybe. Right? Then we found out that when you do some of these techniques with the gloves on, with the pads on, they're not very effective. So we said, well, hmm, what does work with gloves? Boxing techniques. So we got rid of the karate techniques because you've got pads on. You know, like a reverse punch or a karate punch is designed to penetrate the body. Well, you've got an eight ounce glove on or a 10 ounce glove on, you can't penetrate the body. Now you gotta change it, like a concussive type movement. And the jab is more effective than the back fist now. 
we my, now my kicks are the same, side rack, side kick, rack kick, hook kick, but the boxing techniques became mine. I took regular boxing techniques, changed to a jab and a hook because I fight sideways. Right. And and what do you feel is the legacy of kickboxing is today? I think it's growing by leaps and bounds. Uh, we started the PK again in the United States, so they're going to come up with some really good fights. Some of the guys in, in England will be invited. Some of the guys in, in uh, Jamie will be invited. A lot of the guys are, are very, very good fighters. Come over to the United States, get on national television. Come over here to, stay, to England, get some national television. I think it'll be fantastic. I'm really for it. Do you remember your fights? That you Every one of them. Filmed on television and they used to Every one of them. put them on. And it, I used to watch you in awe. I never watched one of them. <laughs> I was there. I mean, it sounds terrible, but I, excuse me, I was there. And, you know, there's, and I've watched fights before, some of it, and I go, you stupid idiot, why didn't, why'd you turn that way? You know, I'm, I'm very critical. Yeah. So when I'm watching the fights, I'm doing this, and, and people that watch it with me, they move. <laughs> because, what are you doing? I said, well, I miss, I made a mistake, I did this, I did that. You know, there's a fight scene, or one of the fights, I'm fighting Blinky Rodriguez. He throws a left hook from way back there. It's like one of these things. So I say, I got it blocked. <laughs> well, it's about this far from my chin. And he goes, boom, right on. And I go, ooh, what are those birds floating around up there? <laughs> I, you know, I came back and, and, and won, but I went, whoa, shit. So that's where the card goes. So you, you can learn something, but, but I'm too critical of myself. Well. You've get going back to the show. You've now done so many shows, and everybody still turns up religiously. And you must have a massive following. How does that make you feel? The people are great. I mean, I I love to interact with the people. I love to teach. Love to do the seminars. It's it's. I learned when I was in the service, and in the service, if ever, anybody's been in the service out there, you've got two jobs. Your job during the day, that's your military job. Then at night, when you're off work, you either find something to do or go get drunk with your buddies. Number one, I don't drink. So I had to go find something to do. And to find the something to do was judo, because I was a wrestler in high school and college. I played judo up until I went to Okinawa. I hurt my knee in Okinawa, so that took care of my judo career. But that friend says, hey, there's a karate school downtown. Let's go check it out. Ta -da. Hence the karate. Bill, thank you very much. But I'll just ask my director, is, yes. there, is there anything you want to ask? Yeah, could I ask a question Surely. about the protector, Bill? Um, it's very famous that there's an American version of and your a Chinese party, version, yeah. And a Chinese version. How did Jackie approach you to ask you to film that additional footage? We, we filmed the original American version in about two months, two and a half months. Then I flew home. I fly back in December. I spent another three weeks there, the first of December, doing the Chinese version. And it's different for Americans, because the Chinese, American is bam, 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 just knock the hell out of each other, right? So, it, so it's exciting. The Chinese version is block, 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 strike. Block, 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 strike. And I went, yeah, because to Americans, that's like, who's going to believe that? But that's what they're used to doing, so that's what we did. We, we took a brand new Mercedes and beat the hell out of it. I was supposed to, he, he's, I knocked him against the, the, the hood of the Mercedes, the, the, uh, the bonnet, and I come down with an axe kick, and he moves out of it. And I, and, and I, first time, I pulled it a couple times. He says, no, no, don't pull it, because we want to see the dent. It's, it's the producer's Mercedes. And I went, no, you don't. Oh, yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Well, you guys are sick. So I go, yeah, bam. I put a dent about yay deep in the, in the Mercedes. He said, perfect, because, you know, the film stuck right on the dent. The, drug, you know, the producer got a little pissed off. He said, what did you do to my car? It can be fixed. Not very easily. <laughs> so, but the, the best part about it is, Jackie wanted to do, wanted to spar. Now, he did, a, he did a movie before me with Benny Urquidez called Meals on Wheels. And Ben and I talked, and Benny asked him to spar. 
And if you know anything at all about Benny or Kitties, he is one tough son of a gun. A tough son of a gun. But he's easy to hit. So you, you, Jackie would hit him a couple times. Therefore, Jackie thinks that he could take him. I said, Jackie, just listen to me. Benny's easy to hit. Everybody that's ever sparred him has hit him. But one of these times he's going to throw a punch, you're going to throw a punch, or a kick. When you pull it back, Benny's still going to be on the end of it. He's going to look at you and says, sorry, Jackie, my turn. And you don't want it to be his turn. You don't want it to be his turn. So I said, and I said that's what it is. And he asked me to spar. So I sparred with him nice and easy. We, just, we had a good time. Bill Wallace. Thank you very much for your time. My pleasure. Thank you. Enjoy martial arts, everybody. It's fun kicking people. <laughs>